Good morning, good morning, good morning, folks. Very stupid o'clock. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do, some disclaimers. Very obviously, allergies are kicking my hindquarters this morning. So if you hear me clearing my throat or you hear my voice being hoarse, I'm sorry, folks. Apologies in advance, all right? Okay, let me get a drink here. Oh, better. All right, folks, in the description box, you're going to see the link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It is written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's quote-unquote behavioral modification program. Pardon me a minute. <coughs> Flim is not my friend this morning, folks. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much. They have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they do not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill, folks. Please read the article and share on all your social media. We also have linked in Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat. Excuse me. As well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding folks in case the JRC has the balls to see through with their threat. We also have the pertinent links to the Agape boarding school situation. Agape boarding school is a Christian themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri that has and counting over 21 civil lawsuits and substantiated claims by the Department of Social Services out here in Missouri that include allegations that have been substi- blah, blah, I can't brain today. substantiated so far, which are child abuse, sexual abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, starvation, and yes, even child trafficking. We've had one former staff member arrested by the FBI. We have another, a doctor who's still on the premises that has multiple substantiated by the Department of Social Services claims of sodomy and sexual abuse of the students there. We have an attorney general who is too busy being all mega and wanting to get Trump's approval to do his job, too busy trying to get at Washington to protect the kids that are in his state, to actually do what needs to be done and use the authority of his office to get those kids out of there. So please share these articles we've gone over thus far on all your social media. Please do the same with the change.org shut agape boarding school down petition. And don't forget to sign it. We also got the pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC folks, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. We're also almost to the end of this word salad, folks. Thank you. Thank you, God. But trigger warning, we're going to be talking about excessive predatory behavior in regards to their DVR system and videoing of the students, so trigger warning for that. Folks, this channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity on this channel when we talk about dark subjects. If your child is 16 and under and they are watching, please, for the love of Pete, parental advisory, but parental supervision is advised. Also, it is 4.20 a.m. I very obviously cannot brain this morning. And my allergies are going all over the place. So if I get hoarse, if I clear my throat, or if I stumble over my words, apologies in advance on that, okay? All right. Let's fortify ourselves against the stupid here. Okay, so let's go to where we left off yesterday.
The bathrooms at certain residences are equipped with cameras placed just outside the bathroom sto door. That is a lie. And how do I know that's a lie? <clears throat> well, if you go into the DESI reports, you're going to see a particular incident where a staff was actually shown to have thrown a fully clothed student into the shower and then punch said student. This is not something that could have been videotaped or shown exactly what was going on if there was not a bathroom inside the bathroom, specifically to where they could see what was going on inside the bathroom shower. So, with receipts, we can prove that is a lie. Also in DESI reports, it has been reported by students that these folks will force these kids to leave the bathroom door open, even when doing their business, because dangerous behaviors. Really? Really? You couldn't leave the door closed and just, I don't know, station someone outside to listen? Again, it falls flat on its face. A, we can prove that it's a lie with the DESI reports. B, it's still not respecting their privacy if you are telling them that they have to leave the door open where anybody can see them. But they can only leave it open six inches and you really expect somebody not to look? Really? Really now? The JRC likes to split hairs and make logical fallacy arguments. We've seen it throughout this entire report. The fact of the matter is they do not care about these kids' privacy any more than they do about any of their other human rights that they violate on a semi-regular basis. But let's continue to read here. JOC does not use the camera or voice recorders in certain nursing offices or clinicians' offices and maintains certain conference rooms without recording devices for students to visit their families or to make confidential phone calls as appropriate and needed. Is that a fact? We know from Desi reports and survivor testimony that they may not have cameras there, but what they do have is a staff member, not even three feet away with the electric shock device. So it's not the flex the JRC says it is. When they don't have cameras there, they have staff there with the electric shock device. If you remember back to when we were going towards the interviews that they were showing on YouTube. One of those is where it shows a parent with their kids with a staff member about three feet back with the electric shock device. That is not respecting a family or the student's privacy. In fact, it puts the fear of punishment on that student while they're visiting with their family. How are they supposed to communicate or tell their family what's going on when they've got the threat of harm within eye range of the student? Really? Really now, DRC? Let's talk about something else here. They have staff at the clinician's office. Remember, because they have them about three feet back. Their so-called giving kids privacy with the clinicians is garbage because they have a staff member there with a shock device just in case they show any behaviors towards anything they get up to in that clinician's office. Exactly how are they supposed to tell the clinician that there's abuse going on with someone there with a shock device not that far from them? It's an intimidation tactic, folks. And it does not respect their privacy at all, at all, period. 
The fact that you tell me that there's some conference room that don't have microphones, why do I have the feeling that's the benefit for the staff and not for the students? It's not the flex you think it is, JRC. What do you get up to in those conference rooms? What is it that you don't want them to hear? Why is it you have it in some conference rooms and not others? You're not consistent, JRC. You don't, you lack the courage of your convictions, so to speak. If this is such a wonderful video monitoring system, why are you selecting certain rooms at certain times to not be recorded? You can't have it both ways. You can't have cameras in the bathroom stalls but have certain conference rooms marked as not recordable or not video worthy. It doesn't work. There's no consistency there. If you want to use this as a great defense on how this makes your kids more secure, why are there some areas where the cameras aren't there? You basically destroy your own argument. You destroy your own argument. As far as confidential phone calls, again, we know that that is garbage by survivor testimony and Desi reports. The fact of the matter is there is a staff member there while these kids are making phone calls, listening to every single word that they say. We know this by the JRC's own handbook, no less, to make sure conversation is appropriate yeah jrc your own handbook we have receipts <sighs> the only staff members who are allowed to view the tapes or dvr videos are those who are required to do so in order to fulfill their job requirements here we go again Strangely enough, JRC, this does not put my mind at ease. There are predators in every single walk of life. Your programs and your policy is a open playground for predators and pedophiles. The fact that you even don't force these people to train when they're in basic training, like any other facility around the world does, doesn't give me the utmost confidence in you. I'm telling you your whole system is garbage. That you use those monitors to punish those students, take away all sense of rights to privacy and autonomy, to constantly put them in a state of fear because they never know when the next shock is going to be coming. Remember Jennifer Masamba talking about this and the fact that it just added to the terror that all these kids felt because they never know when they was going to be punished next. It's not the flex they think it is. Their whole argument here is contradictory as hell and makes me even more disturbed, not less. They lie outright, first off. And we can tell that because separate DESI reports that particular incident in the bathroom stall that we've gone over before, in particular, gives the lie to it. We've already been over in this very report, no less, that you forced those kids to keep that bathroom door open. The fact that you're saying it's six inches, again, that's not respecting their privacy. A student should not have to have the bathroom door open even an inch when they go to the bathroom. That is not respecting privacy, JRC. 
it falls flat, folks, and I'm barely even trying. I'm not even having to be fully awake and I can tear this into shreds. I haven't even had my second bout of caffeine yet. Imagine how much easier for someone who isn't as rusty as I am to be able to tear apart this report and all these arguments. It's not that difficult to do because it's garbage. There is no defense on how they carry out surveillance. There is no defense for the actual reasons they really use that surveillance for. It all falls flat, folks. They cannot convince me. They cannot convince me or anyone with two brain cells to rub together that this level of surveillance is necessary for their safety, especially not when there is logical alternatives that still respect the, privacy, the right to privacy of their students that can be utilized instead. They don't care about their privacy. They have literally said so to survivors, which was backed up by the New York report, backed up by the UN Special Repertoire on Torture, and backed up by some of the parents who've been fighting these people for decades. Your word salad is not working, JRC. It does not hold up even to the slightest bit of scrutiny. We're going to close out on that. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject. And the few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So folks, please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.